The Oppo family has been going crazy recently. OnePlus has released the 11R and Realme has released the GT Neo 5. Both are great value Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 budget phones. If you don't like the curved screen of 11R and the craft camera of K60, then GT Neo 5 is a very suitable choice. Plus, the super low price and super fast charging makes it one of my most recommended phones to buy these days. If you're looking to buy a mid-range phone, then you should check it out. I like the design of GT Neo 5 a lot in its price range. It has a lot of design that other phones don't have, such as the transparent area to the right of camera module. You can faintly see the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip inside. Although this is just a decoration element, the real chip is not here. But it shows that Realme is very confident in the chip performance of this phone. This area is made transparent for another reason, the 25 color RGB light ring. It acts as a notification light and lights up in various states. Although I'm not the kind of person who likes to put the phone screen down on the table, but from the design point of view, it still looks good. By the way, the Neo 5 also adds an infrared emitter this time. While the Neo 5 screen is theoretically the same panel as the OnePlus 11R, both are 1240p screens from Tianma. While both are excellent and bright, there are a few things that Neo 5 clearly does better. The most obvious is the refresh rate, which is clearly higher at 144Hz than 120Hz. And you can freely set the refresh rate for each application with four refresh rates to choose from. When you set the refresh rate to 90 or 144Hz, PWM Deeming can reach 2160Hz. Since the display manufacturers like BOE, TCL, and Tianma has developed the better and better screens, many budget phones can also use screen comparable to Samsung panels. I think consumers like us should be happy about this. Next, I want to give a good shout out to the Neo 5's performance. Even though it's using a downclocked version of Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, the game performance is still surprisingly good. At the first half, K60, which also has a downclocked version chip, performs the same as the Neo 5, trying to stick to the highest power to keep the game running at 60fps. But at the second half, Neo 5's strategy is significantly more reasonable. Unlike the K60 where the frame rate suddenly drops down, the Neo 5 comes down to around 45fps at a slow pace. Although the average frame rate is about the same, the Neo 5 gaming experience is significantly better than the K60. The temperature is also not particularly high, plus it also has the same game interpolation and ultra steady frames mode as Ace 2. That's why I'm most satisfied with Neo 5's gaming experience among recent 8 Plus Gen 1 phones. Of course, for the ultimate gaming experience, it is still recommended to get an 8 Gen 2 phone. As for those who want to see the Neo 5 benchmark score, you can pause to watch this part. The iconic IMX76 main camera of the Oppo family phones has been changed to IMX A90 this year. The sensor is just as good as the previous one, and it'll be difficult to pick out any obvious flaws. Although there's no help from Hasselblad or other traditional camera brands, in most of the scenes, it can still take good pictures. At night, I don't recommend that you zoom in to take photos two times or more, otherwise the pictures will become blurry. There's not much to say about the ultra-wide camera either, as it does have a very average performance. Like most budget phones, it's not bad during the day, but it's blurry at night. The Neo 5's macro camera is more interesting because it is a true macro lens. You can use it as a macroscope to take all kinds of interesting photos. Although we won't use this lens often, it's a lot more useful than the useless macro camera that many phones have. When recording video with this camera, the footage will be more shaky because there's no image stabilization. In terms of video recording, just like Ace 2, it does not support 8K but only 4K 60fps. The ultra-wide camera only 1080p 30fps. The main camera performs at the same level as taking pictures, but the ultra-wide camera lags more in terms of image quality, and there's a bug. This ghosting bug is not an occasional problem. As long as you use the ultra-wide camera to take video, this problem will always be there. Anyway, even without this bug, because of bad image quality, Neo 5 ultra-wide camera can completely say goodbye to the video recording.
Charging is definitely the biggest highlight of Neo5. We purchased a 240 watt charging version of it, which is by far the most powerful phone for charging. This is the normal 67 watt phone. This is a 100 watt phone. This is a 210 watt phone that charged the fastest before. And this by far is the fastest charging phone with nine minutes to get it fully charged. Although they don't have the same battery capacity, you can roughly see how big the difference is in their charging speed. This means that if you plug in the charger at the beginning of the video, it should be almost a fully charged by now. If you use any other chargers out there, then it only support up to 18 watt charging. So this 240 watt charger is something that really needs to be taken good care of. Let's talk about this charger more. Although it is much smaller than we expected, it is not light, weighing about the same as a phone. Charging protocols are not that much. In addition to Superbook 240 watt, it also supports 65 watt out PD and QC 3.0 protocols, which is the regular level of the charger in the box. Of course, charging faster comes at the price. The battery will be smaller than the 150 watt version. This 240 watt version will last a little less than a normal 5000 mAh A plus Gen 1 phone. For me, I prefer the 150 watt version. As a mobile device, the battery capacity is more important than the charging speed. Of the recently released A Plus Gen 1 phones, if I have to pick a favorite, it would be the GT Neo 5. Not only does it have a very unique selling points, such as the worst of fastest charging speed and the best gaming experience in its price range, but it's also very cheap, cheaper than both the Ace 2 and the K60. We will do a comparison video between the OnePlus Ace 2 and Neo 5, and then you will know better which one is right for you. I'm Will from China. See you next time.